Hello and good afternoon. Um, so it's the Thursday, the 21st of September 2017. Um, just come back from the pre-op assessment. Um, all good there. Um, gave some blood. You have an ECG. Check your blood pressure. Ask some general questions about your health. Da 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 da. All, all good. Um, so that's all good. We're now getting ready now for Monday because I go in on Tuesday. Monday, then I then have to start taking the bowel preparation uh, stuff. There's awesome stuff called Movi Prep. Um, what I would say with that, from experience, because um, you have to have that or you can use that stuff if you're going to have the camera at the backside. Um, apologies if I'm being quite direct, but I mean, it is what it is. You, you have a camera at your backside for the um, colonoscopy uh, procedure that goes up into the large bowel. And, uh, but for that to happen, the bowel needs to be clean. So this Movi prep, exactly the same as what I'm going to drink on Monday, um, gets your digestive sea system bowels clear and empty. It's kind of like a laxative um, that works pretty quickly. Within, I would say about 20 minutes, you need to head off to the toilet and just stay there. And, but you have to drink, excuse me, you have to drink so much of it. I think about two liters, I think, in four hours. So um, yeah, um, so yeah, so the pre-op is done. Um, so this video, I'm just going to talk about the symptoms really, very briefly, because I think I've mentioned them before. But so with me, um, you know, I was starting to to try and train for a half marathon. Um, I was in the military for for so many years, and then during that time, I did triathlon, duathlon, orienteering. Um, never did a half marathon, never did a marathon and never kind of like flipped my switch. Um, but I could run that distance, you know, in triathlons and duathlons and orienteering very easily, but just mentally and maybe um, just something didn't really flick the switch for me. So then last year I decided to run or enter the Swansea half marathon. Um, very flat course, would have breezed it. That was going to happen on the 26th, 28th of June. Um, and I started to train maybe just before Christmas, I think. Um, and then I started to increase the, the intensity. Not really, actually, possibly one or two additional runs a week. But um, from then on in, um, from February, March. But then I s started to suffer with kind of like gastro uh, always being... Um, bloated, gassy, and, and quite airy, um, and always felt that I've been uneasy as well, as in kind of like nauseous. You stand up and you think, you know, why is the rim kind of like moving, spinning around? So, trying to hold out onto something. Um, I suppose the true sign started in March, where. I started to um, poo blood and there were small small little droplets really just minute little stools um, and you'd feel that you'd want to go to the toilet so you would go go for number two a um, bit of gas and air would come out kind of like a wet fart as well um, <clears throat> but then a stool would pop out and it would just be red in mucus uh, sorry, red, um, and then uh, with like white mucus, clear mucus um, around it, um, and then, and occasionally, and probably more frequently, you would then have little bits of blood actually inside the stool, um, and something that not really that I picked up very, something that I didn't pick up was then the size of the stool itself. Um, and over time, since March, and I would say possibly more, more or less over the last four months, the size of the stool 
has actually become very thin. Um, you know, because some days you can have a you know huge kind of like tree trunk come out, can't you? Depending what you eat and uh, obviously what your diet. So you know, at that point, as soon as you see blood, you're thinking, you know, it's got to cut back on the coffee. So I'm in IT industry. Um, sit down a lot, drink a lot of brews, coffee, tea, caffeine. Um, I think my diet's okay. I don't like fish, or I don't do fish. I should do a lot more. Um, I try and keep it bearable. You know, we've got four kids and two dogs and two cats. So, you know, busy, busy kind of like schedule. So, so you kind of like, as soon as you see something to your diet or to your body that's changing, you, you kind of like try and change things, don't you? So maybe less wine, less booze in total. Uh, become more active um, think about what you're eating look at what you're eating change that change all the habits and unfortunately in my case those things didn't didn't have any impact in you um, I thought that maybe milk dairy products were a were a were an issue but it turns out it, it turns out it tan Balls. Turns out that they weren't, obviously. So it was nothing to do with um, my stomach reacting to what I was eating or drinking, and then going into um, turning it into into the into the uh, bowel stuff, into the, to the shit. Um. So. There were other things that were happening as well, being being lethargic, um, and then obviously the bowel movement. The bowel movement is really up and all around the place. Really, I could I could go ten times in the morning, um, and with me as a runner, not oh, sorry, not me as a runner, but uh, sorry, me as a kind of like a like an amateur runner I would I would always pre have a pre-run shit empty the bowel um, a nervous shit call it what you want empty the bowel and then go for a run and I used to do that and I did that during the try trying to train uh, pick up the intensity and then uh, and then I'll find that literally 500 meters down the road I'll be like I've got to go back I've got to go back pretty quick because I'm going to... And I ended up pooing in my shorts twice. Because the first time you just think, oh, it's just a little bug. A couple of weeks later, it go out again. Um, and it then didn't disappear. Um, along with that, obviously with the bowel movement, one has been the intense frequency. Um, and it's not always um, kind of like diarrhea stuff. It's not even thin. Sometimes you can you have the urgency to go and that is there is nothing coming out you could be really constipated um, so then with your bowel movements that that affects your mood right um, along with being tired various other things so as I mentioned before if you go to the doctors Excuse me. Go to the doctors. They're going to stick a finger up your backside with some lube on. They're going to just make sure that it's um, it could be uh, hemorrhoids, piles. Um, see if there's any blood on, coming out on the finger. Um, you can check that yourself. Um, they would then offer potentially some cream. They offered me that, but. That was no good for me, and I quite blatantly said, "I, I don't need the cream. It is because again, going back to back, going back to the blood. The blood is was very light, um, so it's a fresh bleed, right? It's not it's not dark and it's not old. Um, if it's kind of like um, um, Shiraz, kind of like wine 
colour, it means it's old blood. Um, if it's um, a cherry tomato kind of look, um, a bright cherry tomato, then that's fresh blood. So it meant that it was coming very close to the, the final passage, right? Um, so originally when I went to the doctors, I thought, you know, it could be something like piles. It could be you know, literally a couple of um, centimetres inside. It could just be a, a, a blood vessel that's that, that's popped out or, you know, that's, that side has grow. It just needs to be popped back in or, you know, dealt with. Um, so the doctor offered cream and I, and the cream kind of like, to me, it's, is that you're always constantly producing blood. It's blood on your pants. And that wasn't the case with me. It wasn't in my boxes. It wasn't, it wasn't always there. It was only present when I went to the toilet and when I wiped, that was it. Um, so play maybe maybe go with what they suggest initially but then immediately as soon as you walk out the doctor's door book another appointment and go back in and see him again a couple of days or even a week you've got to do that um, the next thing they'll then do um, especially if you mention blood passing the blood and mucus uh, are the two things uh, feeling tired drowsiness bloatiness your toilet frequency um, changes, then then they'll send you off to um, a colonoscopy, gastroscopy, uh, and come like specialist. They would then have a look at you. You'd of course have to have some bloods in between, uh, do some soil samples, um, and then you'll then go off for a, a camera at the backside. if they find a cancerous tumour. Um, they could find a tumour and it might not be cancerous, so... And hopefully that, that's the case. Um, the other things that it could be are pillocks, where they come like blood vessels, but generally they, they seem to fall off. Some people produce more pillocks, pillocks pollocks, often than others, but um, yeah, you know. That's it. Okay. Adios, amigos. So long is another goodbye for in Welsh. So long.